Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy, happy Friday. Welcome to Sloth Mode Restorative. Um, we're just gonna jump right in today. I will mention if you're new to this practice or if you've never taken Sloth Mode Restorative with me in the past, um, you will want to have a couple of yoga blocks. If you don't have any yoga blocks or maybe something that is similar to the shape of a yoga block, um, what you can grab is like a pot, um, with a blanket over it probably for today just like a low pot uh, low pot something that's about the same height as this um, we may en end up not using these also a blanket here and a yoga bolster if you don't have a yoga bolster i'm sure you've got a couple blankets around um, just something that's i don't know what is that about a foot about a foot tall um, is all you will need for support you can also grab pillows and blankets and really whatever. A foam roller is nice too. You can use a foam roller for support. So we're going to get right into it today. And let me adjust my camera. I was having some issues getting set up this morning, so I didn't really get myself in that right angle. So good morning. Good morning. All right. I think that's good. You can probably see me. Okay. Fix this side a bit. And let's rock and roll. Okay, so coming on to your mat, we're going to come back onto the spine. So scooch the bottom a little closer to the heels, lowering down onto the spine. The mid spine will come to the floor. We're going to take the thumbs to the base of the skull and interlace the other fingers. Hug those elbows in towards the head and let the weight of the head drop back into the hands. As you exhale, lower shoulders down and release the skull to the mat. Walk those shoulders away from your ears here, and then we're just gonna bring the hands to the low belly. Walking those feet to the width of the mat, let the knees rest in. And just get with breath here. We're coming to that opening space, becoming present, becoming aware. And just really settling down enough to fully be completely present in our practice today. Enjoying the breath as it naturally deepens, dropping down deeper into that low belly. Allowing the body to defrag, just letting the head, the shoulders, the arms, the back body, the lower back, the bottom, the legs, letting everything sort of surrender to gravity. And we'll bring some awareness to the face here. Smoothing out the creases on the forehead, softening the brow line, relaxing the jaw, the throat. And the breath will become deeper and deeper as we settle down more and more. Every exhale, feeling as though the body is just sinking back into the support of the earth. As the body-mind begins to settle, we're allowing those thoughts, whatever thoughts are passing through your mind, just allowing them to sort of float on by like clouds across a big blue sky. On your next few breaths, we're going to see if we can draw those inhales a bit deeper, creating a little bit more space within. 
And with every exhale, just letting go a little bit more. You can even let those hands drop out wide, palms face up. And just let the weight of the arms and hands sink down into the earth. next couple of breaths, we're just going to start to heel toe those feet back in line with the sit bones. So your heels are in line with sit bones and then we're walking those, those feet back so that the ankles are just underneath the knees. Take another big breath here and as you exhale, bring the palms face down, maybe even walk those shoulders away from the ears to make sure that you're not shortening the length of the neck. On an inhale, we're gonna feel, fill belly up with breath, sort of arching the spine here. So you're sort of tucking those sit bones down into the mat, letting that mid spine float up towards the belly. Have another inhale here. And as you exhale, we're going to tuck that tailbone, drawing the belly gently back bringing mid spine back towards the floor, pressing into the feet, rise up into a bridge pose. And you can come up as high as is comfortable for you. <clears throat> Making sure to keep the knees tracking over the ankles, pressing pubic bone up towards the sky. Once you come up to your, your highest or your furthest bridge pose, peel the heels off the floor. Take one more big breath in. And as you exhale, we're gonna lower down one vertebrae at a time, all the way back to the low back sacrum, and then release those heels down. From here, on exhale, next exhale, we're gonna hug the right knee in and extend the left leg long down the length of the mat, flexing the left foot. Draw those toes back towards your shin and press into the ball of the left foot. As you exhale here, we're gonna keep that left foot just like it is. Left quadricep, the left top thigh is pretty active. So we're pressing this left thigh down towards the floor as if it were anchored, if, if it, you had a weight over that left leg, as if um, you were trying to push this left thigh into the floor. And on exhale, you'll hug the right knee in a little bit deeper. Be mindful of the hips here. The right hip tends to want to hike up. So you're just going to want to swing that tailbone off so that it's in line with the inner left thigh. And just squeeze the knee in a little bit more. So as we move through any practice, there's this tendency to pose and repose, where we come into a posture and then our body's natural tension or our body's familiar patterns tend to drop us into some type of misalignment. And we'll usually just notice it on an inhale and on an exhale, adjust to find evenness in the pose. So with this right knee in towards the chest and left leg active, left foot flexed, extending out long through that left heel. As you exhale, let's squeeze the right knee in just a little bit more. And then we're going to extend the right leg overhead. So just as high up as you can get it without shaking, 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 or feeling like you're working your butt off to keep it here. You can take the hands back behind the knee. You can take peace fingers to big toes on the right foot if you'd like. If that's too far, let me grab my strap. If that's too far, that's why we have these really awesome yoga straps. I just realized my feet I'm not showing. Let me move you guys back a little bit. That'll work better. Ta-da! <laughs> All right. So with the left leg extended foot flex, if you can't quite grab a hold of the right toes with the right finger and keep that right hip from hiking way up towards your right side body, what you can do is take the strap, the center of the strap over the ball of the right foot, 
and just lightly grab a hold of the ends of the strap with thumb and four fingers on both hands. And then we're just going to take a couple breaths here. You can press into the ball of the foot, drawing those toes back. And then we're going to take both ends of this strap, turning the toes off to the right. So we're not just moving at the ankle. We're going to move from the top of the femur or the top of the thigh bone, rotating this whole right leg out to the right. And then a left arm out wide as a counterbalance, dropping that right foot off to the right. Right elbow rests down on the floor, elbow is bent, we're holding on to the strap. If you don't have a strap, you can totally use a towel, you can use a strip of cloth, um, as long as it's a supportive, you know, like canvas or um, something that's not going to tear. Or a belt, a belt works nicely too, so if you have any of those canvas belts laying around, maybe grab one of those. Um, so again, we're not gripping for dear life to hold our leg here, like, ah, oh, I got it, holy lady. We are pressing out into the inner ball, the outer ball of that right foot, and we're just kind of hanging on here to give us a little resistance. Remembering to stay anchored through left leg. We're gonna feel a nice stretch through the inner growing of that right leg, inner thigh. Have a couple breaths here. Belly button anchors back. And on your next exhale, bend the right knee back in to the belly. We're going to release the strap and just hug that knee in again. Left foot is staying flexed. So sometimes it'll sickle, sometimes that left leg goes, oh, whatever, and the left foot just hangs out. Keeping strong through this left side, keeping the belly active helps us to stay anchored here. So this is sloth mode. We're not going to do this for forever. This one's a little more work than any of the other postures we're going to be doing today. Um, but I just wanted to get into the legs and the hips a little bit before we get going. So as you exhale, we're going to extend this right leg into the strap just as we did on the other side. You can use the strap to draw the leg a little closer to you. Just be mindful of the hips. So it's as simple as just swinging the hips to the left a little bit to keep the tailbone in line with your standing leg or your left leg. You could also, if you don't have a strap, just grab a hold of the back of the knee. You could let the knee bend a little bit. Just looking for a little bit of length down the back of that leg. So opposite, moving in the opposite direction as the last posture we took. We're going to take right arm out wide, palm faces up, and on an exhale, turn these toes of the right foot off to the left. Now, we're not just turning the toes and trying to point our toes to the left like you would footwork. And what we're doing here is from the top of the thigh bone, we are internally rotating that right leg. And then we're just going to take it off to the left a little bit until we feel a little bit of a, a stretch from right hip down the outer edge of the right leg. Um, we don't want that right hip to hike up just yet, so keep that right hip anchored down, just taking a few breaths to feel through this here. And on an exhale, we're going to go ahead and roll all the way to the outside of the left hip, right foot comes to the floor. You've still got your strap here, or maybe you're holding on to the leg. Either way, both legs are extending out long, the left leg down the length of the mat, the right leg reaching out to the left. On your next exhale, you can bend the left knee, reach the right hand down to grab a hold of top of left foot, and then press that foot evenly into the hand to open up the front of the left thigh as well. So take two or three breaths here. And as you exhale, bending right knee, extending left leg, rolling right back off to the spine. Just drop the strap for a moment. Hug right knee in. Take a breath or two. Letting go on each exhale just a little bit more. And with your next exhale, we're going to 
cut loose the strap and set it right next to us, switching legs, hugging left knee into the belly, extending out long through right leg, flexing the right foot, toes drawing back, as though you were standing on the right leg and then checking in with the hip, swing your tailbone in line with the inner seam of right thigh. Have a couple breaths here. So each inhale, the belly billows out, creating that space, sort of carving space out like an ocean wave crashes over the shore and draws sand back with it. The inhale is that forceful wave or that strong current coming over the sand. The exhale is the drawing back, the receding of the wave. So keeping those hips even, feeling grounded, feeling the support of your belly. It's not like we're doing a ton of crunches and trying to get, you know, a 12 pack or whatever, <laughs> but more so just a gentle, like a magnet, uh, the belly like a magnet towards the front of the spine. And sometimes I'll even think of this as um, a string that is um, pulled through my belly button with a little anchor hook over the front and an anchor through the back that anchors me into the earth. So with your exhale, we're going to extend the left leg long. Again, you can use the strap. You can grab a hold of the big toe with the peace fingers. And I am so tight today. This is a bit much for me right now holding onto the feet. So I'm going to use a strap myself. And you know, if the strap isn't really comfortable, if it's easier to just hold onto the back of the knee, go for it. But we're still trying to keep that extension. And if you're real tight, your leg may be somewhere down here, feeling, feeling its fullest stretch. And that's okay, right? We're not here to, um, to be Gumby. We're here to honor our body and how to, you know, to learn to honor it more and more every day, to honor ourselves. So just taking a couple of breaths here, settling down with each exhale, noticing what signals the body is sending you, noticing what sensations are coming up, what thoughts you might be having. And on an exhale, we're gonna turn these toes, the left toes, off to the left from the top of the thigh. So you're externally rotating this left leg. And then you're just gonna drop this leg off to the left. Now, one thing I totally failed to mention on the other side, looking at the bottom of my feet here, huh? Um, on the other side, I failed to mention, if you're feeling like this is a bit much and you're feeling like this, the strap isn't enough support to keep from falling into a deeper version of the posture than your body's ready for, what you can do is take, you can take a block. You can take a blanket. I'm gonna use the blanket because I think most people have a blanket at home. <clears throat> but you can fold up the blanket, place it just to the outer edge of your left hip so that when you come out, you've got a little bit of support so that you're not just kind of floating there and adding too much um, you know, compression to the outer hip or extension to the inner thigh. Breathing into wherever you're feeling this. Working on keeping those hips even. So without judgment when that left or if that left hip hikes up, just simply say, oh look, my left hip just hiked up. <clears throat> I'm going to exhale and drop that tailbone towards the inner seam of my right thigh. There we go. And just have a couple more breaths. On an exhale, left knee draws in towards side body, hugging the knee into the chest. Just let the strap hang wherever it is and be mindful to keep that tailbone in line with inner right thigh. Exhaling the left leg back overhead. We're going to, I'm going to adjust myself here. <clears throat> We're going to press into the ball of that foot, drawing the toes back. And then on an exhale, we're going to take both ends of the strap into the right hand. The left arm is moving out wide. We've still got this right leg activated just for anchoring purposes, turning the left toes to the right. So we're internally rotating. Here's external rotation 
internal rotation, rotating that whole leg in towards the midline of the body. As you exhale, dropping the leg off to the right, keep the left hip grounded here and have a couple of breaths, just reaching up through that leg, doing your best to kind of relax the grip on the hand here. This is just there to kind of keep a little bit of resistance, not to, you know, release tension somewhere and then create tension elsewhere. So we're not trying to white knuckle it here. Couple more breaths here. And on your next exhale, go ahead and roll to the outside of the right hip, dropping the left leg all the way off to the right. Now you might find that this is too deep. What you can do is again, bring the blanket or the blocks or the bolster. Here's my blanket. I'm gonna place it underneath my inner left thigh so that I'm not forcing myself to go all the way to the floor when I'm not ready. So if you feel like the floor is too far away, then honor that. Honor those cues from your body, mind, and spirit. And then just having a couple breaths here, trying to release whatever tension is holding on in the pose. As you exhale, we're gonna bend right knee, reach down to grab a hold with the left hand. Now, if this is too deep, if it puts a tweak in the knee, if it just doesn't feel okay, then skip it. Just keep that leg extended, stay in the twist. We're gonna take about three breaths here. Three to five big old Buddha belly breaths. Letting go of tension in the mind, letting go of any holding in the body, and surrendering. So you may find there's some space in the body that is holding on tight, or some space that just feels like it doesn't have much room, or the breath can't quite get there. So those are the spaces that you just pay a little more TLC, tender loving care and attention to. So breathing the breath directly into those spaces and on the exhale, letting go of the tension that's been there. Softening around the pose. And as you exhale, release the right leg long. And then the left knee in, roll back off to the spine. You might want to use that right foot to get the low back back to center and then just release both feet flat onto the floor. So here the palms will face up as if you were coming into Shavasana. As you inhale, we're going to feel, fill the belly up with breath. Arch the spine, so pressing in a little bit of a modified fish pose. Pressing into the back of the head, if this is tough, if you're not quite sure how to activate this fish pose, what you could do is use your, your arms here to press down into the floor and just walk that head back. Now, if this creates uncomfortable tension in the neck, which I think most tension is uncomfortable, a um, little redundant there, <laughs> but if it's creating tension in the neck, just skip the upper, the shoulder and neck part of this posture. You can really just arch the low back. Fill that belly up with breath, a big old Santa Claus Buddha belly breath. And as you exhale, we're lowering down, just sliding the head and lowering the shoulders, the spine, collapsing everything into the mat. If you'd like, you can let the knees rest in together or you can just keep those knees floating overhead. Softening the face again, letting go of any effort that you may have put out over those last couple of postures. And as you exhale, we're going to hug both knees into the belly, rocking side to side. I'm already getting a little snap, crackle, pop in the hips here. On your exhale, we're going to bring the soles of the feet together. Grab a hold of the outer edges of the feet. Let those knees drop out wide and draw the feet closer to your body, to your thorax. We're going to interlace the fingers underneath the feet. Let the shoulders remain to the floor and just use the forearms or the elbows to press the inner legs, the, the shins, 
the thighs away. Stay grounded through your sacrum here as much as you can. And as you exhale, release holding on to the feet. Now, if holding on to the feet was like, that's not an option for me, lady, what you can do is just take your strap and bring those feet as close to you as you can. We want to make sure the shoulders stay relaxed here. So with your next exhale, both feet come back onto the floor. And just checking in. Again, how is each posture affecting me? Sensation-wise affecting me. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh. I forgot to put my phone on Do Not Disturb. My bad, guys. So what I was saying, um, we, we settle down in between each posture just to kind of check in with the sensation. What is happening in the body? How am I feeling? Is this bringing anything up for me emotionally, mentally, physically? Um, the idea is to be super present with the practice. Not to be super perfect, but to be super present. So on your next exhale, we're going to take right ankle onto left knee. There's a couple of ways that you can practice the number four stretch, which I think is this is just one of the best ways to get the right hip nice and open. You can place the right hand to the inner right thigh and press that thigh away. You can also place your left foot over a block and do what I just said, right? Pressing that inner right thigh away with the left foot on a block, that raises this up a little bit. So if you're real tight in the hips, this might be all you need. Give yourself as many breaths here as you possibly can. If that's not quite enough, but grabbing a hold of the back of the leg isn't going to work out for you, you can take this left foot to a wall, to a couch, to wherever you can to get that resistance and then get the additional, you know, whatever distance you want to go with the stretch by pressing the inner right leg away. If you want to come fully into this, what you can do is wrap or interlace the fingers around the back of the left knee, press the right elbow into the inner right thigh. Even flexing the right foot is going to intensify this stretch. We want to keep the shoulders on the floor though. That's one key is if you're pulling those shoulders off the floor to come here, you're going to lose some of that restorative effect, some of that relaxation that you can get from this pose. So letting the left foot hang, sometimes I just kick it around for a second just to remind it that, hey, buddy, you don't have to do the work here. And then we're just getting with breath again. Breathing into the tight spaces, that right elbow pressing away to inner right thigh. And on your next exhale, we're going to take the right arm wide, left hand comes to right ankle. We're going to drop the whole position of the legs off to the left. You can even walk the left shoulder off to the left a little bit just to get a little more evenness in the spine. Take your gaze over right shoulder and just get with breath here. We'll be here for a while. I'm surprisingly going to stop talking for a little bit. Just let your body sink into whatever's coming up for it now. If this is a little too deep, you can take a blanket underneath the right foot and the outer left knee. And if the right ankle feels like it's too far to really grab a hold of comfortably, you can bring your strap right into this. Just wrapping the strap around the right ankle and holding on to it just to keep that foot right where it is. So play with it. Right? These postures are kind of guidelines for what you can do and what's going to help with this or that. <clears throat> it's not so much that you have to do it one specific way each time. We're breathing into the spaces of the body, 
Noticing where the breath might feel a little stuck. Noticing where the breath is flowing freely. And just softening around those stuck spots. Letting go. you find the mind begins to wander with quiet and stillness, let it. Rather than chasing those thoughts down, trying to catch on, rather than shunning those thoughts away or shaming yourself for having them, simply watch them like a movie, like clouds in the sky like birds on a wire. Three more breaths here, let it go, let it be gentle. On the next exhale, we're going to stay here for a moment. Just going to play with a couple of variations of this one. You can take this left hand to the inner right thigh and just press the leg away. If you notice the right foot starts to slide, just bring it back. Sort of get it hooked into the floor there. <coughs> Excuse me. And just have a couple breaths here. Stay relaxed in the shoulders. Letting tension go in the face, the throat, and the hips. On your next exhale, we're going to gently draw the leg closer. So not moving the hand, just moving in the opposite direction with that leg. And just see how that feels. So giving yourself a few breaths. Sort of explore your inner landscape. And as you exhale, releasing that right knee, we're going to slowly bring right knee right on top of the left. And Hug the knees into the belly. Just let the left hand rest to the outer right knee. Right hand reaches out wide. If you find that this is too much, if it's tugging on the low back for some reason, take a blanket or a pillow and just place it in between the legs. If you're feeling like the floor is too far away for this left leg, same thing. And you can do both. So if you need both, then I'll just show with one blanket. You could just take a blanket underneath and a blanket in between the legs. more breaths here, just letting go with each exhale. And with your next exhale, we're going to come back to center, bringing those feet back to the floor, hands to the low belly, check in. Notice whatever you're feeling here today. And as you 
you exhale, we're going to take the left ankle to the top of the right knee. Again, I'm just going to walk us through the steps for anybody who's just joining in. Press the left hand into the inner left thigh. If you need a little bit more, you can take right foot onto a block or a wall or a chair or some support. And if you want to go all the way, taking the fingers and interlacing them around the back of right thigh. And this isn't like the goal. The goal isn't to come to your number four stretch with the hands behind the leg. The goal is to find the number four stretch that feels best in your body. So really taking the time to honestly, organically discover that, sitting here for a moment, saying, is this a balance between effort and surrender? And then getting with the breath, you can flex the left foot, Make sure the right leg is pretty relaxed. Sometimes it helps to just kick it around. As you exhale, we're going to take right hand to left ankle, left arm drops out wide, and we'll just drop this whole position of the legs off to the right. Gaze moves over left shoulder so long as that's not creating any nausea or dizziness or discomfort in the neck. Breathing into those tight spaces, allowing your body to surrender around the tension. <clears throat> I had an interesting conversation with my mailman the other day. He's so awesome, and we just totally click with the talkie talkie. And so he you know, we'll have these epiphanies and then when we see each other, we'll share them. We'll say, oh, you know what I was thinking? So he says the other day, you know what I was thinking? And I said, oh, what? What were you thinking? And he says, I was thinking that when we, when we create any force, when we try to force anything, we will always be met with resistance. So the best way to move through life is to just flow. And I was like, well, yeah. I mean, we can't force everything. If we're trying to force love, we'll be met with resistance, and resistance is not what we want. If we're trying to force a stretch, we'll be met with resistance, and we can injure ourselves. But if we have no resistance, then we have no growth. So at some, in some ways, we have to put a force out there, because without any kind of force, there would be no movement. So we do want to create force, but we don't want to force things. It's kind of the epiphany that I came to with what he was saying. Um, but it's a good concept to keep in your mind. Wherever I create force, there will be resistance. So recognizing in that moment, is this something that I'm willing to work with that resistance on? So here in the body, as we come into a posture, if we force our body deeper into something, we're going to meet resistance. It's going to take time for that resistance to unwind. Now, bringing the body into a, a position, we are creating some kind of a force that moves the body into that position. So there's resistance, and I'm feeling resistance in my upper IT attachment, in my hip, a little bit of my low back but it feels good so just knowing what kind of resistance you're you're ready for is healthy for you
couple more breaths. Big old fat Buddha belly breaths, expanding the space within like that incoming ocean wave. And on the exhale, washing away back out to sea. Any tension that you're still in the body. With your next exhale, we're going to stay here in this position. We're just going to switch it up a bit, bringing the right hand to inner left knee, pressing that knee away, keeping the shoulders down on the mat. Oh, hello, my cat's back. He goes out every morning. Mr. Motoid is kitty. He goes out every morning and it's become a bit of a habit where he won't come back until middle of class time, maybe. Let me hear how I feel about that. Oh. So a couple breaths here, just pressing as much as your body is welcoming you to. We're not forcing it to that point of resistance that is painful. We are just giving a little bit of force in order to create that resistance that is healthy for our body, our mind, our spirit. Another big breath in and as you exhale, we're going to just slide the hand to the outside of the knee and use the weight of the arm really. We're not even using the muscles. We're just using the weight of the arm to drop that left knee down a little bit. And if one of these feels bad and the others, other feels good, then maybe stick with what is feeling good to your body this morning. Reminding yourself to stop in the face. And when we start scrunching up the face as we are thinking or feeling or sensing, And on the next exhale, let the left knee go. We're going to unhook that left ankle from right knee and let the left knee just rest over the top of the right. Gaze moving over left shoulder. more breaths here. And as you exhale, we're going to transition. So rolling over to the right side body, we're going to use the left hand to press into the mat. You've got your right hip on the floor still. Those knees are off to the right. And we're just going to take the hands to the width of the mat and lower the chest down to the mat, taking the arms out wide. You may want to bring the left ear to the mat if that's comfortable. This might be a little too deep for some. So just honor that within yourself. If it's too much to bring the left ear, just take the right ear back to the mat. Enjoying your breath, allowing the breath to fill up all those tense spaces, washing away the tension as you breathe out. And on your exhale, bring those hands alongside the heart, pressing up to seated. We're going to go ahead and rock right to the other side. So bringing the knees out to the left, left hip is on the floor. You're going to bring your hands over alongside the left side body and walking yourself to where the hands are straddling the mat lengthwise. So your hands are on the edges of your mat. 
and then you'll just exhale to lower that heart down. Now, if this is too deep, which is very possible that this might be too deep, what you can do is bring some support underneath the chest. I should probably start offering these modifications on the first side for anybody who's like, wait, I can't, this is not comfortable. So as many blankets as you need, as many bolsters, as many um, pillows as you might need to come into this one. And we're just going to exhale and lower on down. Again, right ear to the mat. If it's not too hard to come by, if that's creating some tension, that's not what we're here for. Just bring the left ear to the mat. And just really being with breath here. If you find that your spine or your body's a little scrunched up here, what you can do is just, oh, I gotta squeeze my hand in my mouth. What you could do is just press into the hands and draw the heart a little further forward so that you can feel that nice long spine, uh, spine, side body, nice long torso. Couple breaths here. And as you exhale, slowly bringing those hands back alongside the heart, pressing back up to seated. We are going, I got these new pants. I love them and then I'm not sure that I love them. So there's that. <laughs> they're cool and they're nice because they help you air out. I'm not really a huge fan of wearing shorts when I practice and teach. Um, just they hike up and all of that. So it's nice to have some air and hot thing flowing through. So we're going to come to Baddha Konasana and we are going to walk the bottom. If you're sideways on your mat, this is a perfect place to measure um, your distance. We're going to bring that middle area of the foot, so the outer edge of the foot, just the center part, basically in line where, where your arch of your foot is. And we're going to bring the sit bones back to the back edge of the mat. So I guess this is about mm, a foot and a half, two feet wide space, and you'll create a diamond with the legs. And there's a few ways we can go about coming into this posture. You can hold on to the shins, take a nice big breath in as you lengthen up through spine. As you exhale, bending the elbows, you're going to draw your torso towards the legs, pressing into those inner thighs, dangling over the feet, Enjoying a few breaths here just as you kind of settle into what the posture is going to be. And at some point, bringing those hands to the toes, dangling the head over the feet. If your head doesn't come all that close to your feet, you can use a block. You can place a blanket over the feet for a little support for the forehead. Just find what's working for you this morning. <clears throat> Another way we can come into the, uh, this posture is by taking those arms underneath the legs and wrapping the hands over the tops of the feet. This is more for those of you that are able to come into a full forward fold, um, you know, Dandasana, not, sorry, not Dandasana. Yeah, staff pose. When we come into staff pose and we move into a forward fold. If you're able to have your legs fully extended and come into your forward fold, then this might work for you with the hands underneath the legs and just folding over the toes. You're going to have a few breaths here. Hopefully your feet aren't too stinky. <laughs> You've washed them up. Um, if, if they aren't and you haven't showered or whatever today, then maybe just throw that blanket right on top. That's all good, right? Just a little support. Maybe you've got a foot thing. One of my best friends growing up was like, don't put your feet anywhere near me. So we all have different things going on. So just letting that body release. If you're feeling like getting a little bit more in the length, you can again take those forearms to the inner knees and just press them gently down. 
Give me a little girl with the hands if you like. A couple more big Buddha belly breaths here. Oh goodness, we're almost out of time, aren't we? I think I'm gonna go a little over today. So a couple more big Buddha belly breaths. And as you exhale, pressing into the hands, we're going to rise back on up to our seated position. Take your left leg out to, um, so if you're not already, let's come sideways on the mat. I think that's the best way to go through this next little section. You're going to take the left foot to that top corner of the mat, the right foot to the inner left thigh. Now, if the left foot doesn't reach there very easily, it's okay if it's a little further down. It's not going to hurt anything. So we're going to sit up nice and tall here. We want to feel those sit bones grounding down. I am going to turn sideways just to show for a moment the spine. I jammed up my middle finger, so it's tough to use right now. So sitting up nice and tall, stacking one vertebrae over the next. We're going to inhale the arms overhead. And right now the torso is centered over the pubic bone, the hip bone. As you exhale, you're going to gently rotate through the spine, turning the belly to face left leg. Left toes are flexed. On your exhale, we're going to stay long through the spine, reaching, 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 reaching for those toes. When you get to that point where you're like, that's about as far as I want to go for the back of the left leg or wherever you're feeling this, it might be in the back body, you're going to either grab a hold of blocks or maybe the support of a bolster, and we're going to just hang out here. Okay, so <clears throat> finding as much length as you can. If you're not grabbing hold of the feet, you've got those forearms on the floor, and you're just dangling the upper spine. With your next couple of breaths, let go of any remaining bits of tension that you may be feeling in the legs, in the belly, in the low back, or in the hip, or really anywhere. Just let it go. As you exhale, walking it back up one vertebrae at a time, we're going to take it right to the other side. So this time, I'm going to move these props out of the way. So this time, bringing the hands back behind you, you can extend right foot out to the corner of that mat. Left foot comes to the inner right thigh. And we've, we're trying to get that left heel as close to um, the upper attachment of the groin um, or close to the pubic bone and inhaling nice and long right now our belly our heart our head are all centered over the hips so we've got this straight line running we're going to inhale the arms overhead as we exhale gently rotating through the spine the belly is going to draw back towards the front of the spine to sort of initiate this movement Relaxing the shoulders away from the ears. Try to soften your face. Flex the right toes so that we're not kind of getting willy-nilly with that right foot, right leg. Keep the spine long as you reach, 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 reach. When you get to that point where you're like, okay, I don't think I can go anymore with a long spine, you bring the hands to the floor. You'll hold on to the feet, one or the other, and then exhale to release. Now you can totally bring your support underneath your head, your heart here. You can have a bolster. You can have two bolsters. So stacking two bolsters up would be about this high, right? So you wouldn't have to go very far. If you're really tight, it's somewhere in the, bo in the body. Who's here? 
Good morning, Raj. And just getting with breath here, wherever you might be feeling some tension, letting it go like that ocean wave. As you inhale, in comes the in tide, breaking over the shore. As you exhale, it's washing away anything loose and taking it back out to sea. Just a couple more breaths here. And with your next couple of exhales, slowly pressing with the hands, walking it back up to seated. We're gonna go ahead and come into just our nice, our nice easy seated position for our final posture before coming into Shavasana. Um, we're going to come through a little bit of um, hip circles and a little cat tail like spine action. So bringing your hands onto the knees, take a breath in, lengthen up through the crown of your head. We want to feel like from the sit bones up through the crown of the head, we're <clears throat> really nice and long. Just stacking one vertebrae over the next. And sometimes as I'm lengthening my spine on the breath in I'll imagine those little discs one in between each vertebrae and I'll imagine that they're balloons and as I'm breathing in the balloons are deflated I'm filling them up with breath so this creates a little more space in between each vertebrae and exhaling just relaxing the shoulders Letting go of any tension holding in the face, in the neck, in the jaw, anywhere that you tend to hold tension, just give a little extra attention to that space and let it go on the exhale. As you take your next breath out, we're going to scoop the tailbone under, draw belly button in towards the front of the spine, draw chin towards heart, and really press that back body towards the wall behind you. As you inhale, we're going to lengthen the heart forward, being mindful not to over arch through the spine. Just drawing the heart forward, letting those shoulders trail down the back. And exhale to scoop the tailbone under, draw belly button back. Inhale to lengthen the heart. This time we're going to draw that heart towards right knee through center. As you're exhaling, coming towards left knee and back through center through that cat-like spine. Inhaling to the right, center, left, exhaling. And just going with your breath, if you get a little off rhythm and you end up exhaling as you come forward, it is not the end of the world. Just find your rhythm. And exhaling back through center, we're going to pause here for a moment. Take a nice chin tuck, tailbone tuck, and inhale to the left knee. So switching directions of the movement. And if you find that naturally the neck wants to go long, cool, go for it. Let that neck kind of float around with this movement. As you exhale, and we're going to come right to center, taking a big breath in. Exhaling to float right back into that nice long spine. <clears throat>
And on your next exhale, we're going to make our way back lengthwise on the mat. And walk those hips a little further forward. Bring the forearms down to the mat. Fingertips are facing the feet. You can kind of wobble the hips a little bit, get long through the neck. On your exhale, tuck in tailbone, rolling up through the spine. Walk those shoulders down the length of the mat. Let the head rest. Take one foot at a time to each corner of the mat for this final resting pose. Laying the arms out wide at your side. Let the feet splay out wide. And just get with your breath here. Soften the face. Allowing the eyes to sink back into sockets. And down towards the cheekbones. Jaw, the throat, the neck, that little space behind the ears, allow the mouth, the lips to rest slightly open. Tongue resting at the upper roof of the mouth, just behind the teeth. Allow the breath to flow anywhere and everywhere. Breath draws in even deeper into the tips of the toes, into fingertips, allowing on exhale your body to just sink back. Exhaling, sweeping away any toxicity in your life, in your mind, in your heart, in your body. Softening back into the support of the earth beneath us. Support from the plants around us who offer us oxygen to breathe. Support of ourselves working tirelessly to mend and heal whatever needs mending and healing within us. Allow the next few breaths to draw deep into the lower belly. Feel a 
are more than welcome to speak to us or respond if you have someone who's ready to come back up will gently wiggle a finger and toes. To bend one knee at a time. Perhaps having a little good morning stretch as you come back to rise. And then making your way off to the side, whichever side you prefer is fine. On an exhale, we'll use the help of the hands, the strength of the arms to press back up to our nice, easy seated position. And we'll take a few moments here. You can place the hands over the knees, palms face up, palms face down. You can come into a mudra if you'd like. Let's take a moment of gratitude. To think of Two or three things that we're, we're grateful for every day. We will walk through life with much more joy, no matter what's coming up. So even if you're really having a hard time with anything in life right now, and it just feels like it's not worth it anymore, or you feel like giving up, if there's one thing, if you can just find one little tiny thing that you can be grateful for, um, a flower, a bug, a cat, a memory, a breath um, that can start to bring joy back into your life and pull you out of that dark space so that you can start right where you are and step over in life um, and not feel like that anymore. So gratitude, let's, let's all just take this moment to Think of one or two things that we're grateful for. And I'm going to go with, um, I'm grateful for sensation. And I'm grateful for this life, the challenges that have taught me so much. And breathe in that gratitude for a few more breaths. Coming back to gratitude at any point during the day if you start to feel pulled out of alignment or overwhelmed or drug right down wherever you're at. Let's go ahead and bring those hands to prayer position of the heart. And when we say namaste, what we're saying is that the divine love and light in me is bowing to the divine love and light within you. Namaste. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.